pull up to the front gate of our, our, our base, our forward operating base, and I get out of the Humvee to go move um, the wire, which is a concertina, kind of like barbed wire. As soon as I grab the wire, I hear this muffled pop, muffled explosion. And the next thing I know, I'm laying a few feet back on the ground. They called in a medevac um, helicopter, and they load me up into it. Um, I get to the forward surgical site, and I remember as I'm going in, I see that I think there was one or two guys out kind of smoking. And I, I look up at their faces and I see them. I can just tell by the way they're looking at me that it must be horrible with the face that they had on. And they bring me into, I guess, an ICU unit in there. And the last thing I remember is they're saying, you know, we're going to have to amputate. Is that okay? And I remember saying, that's fine, that's fine. I just, just want to go to sleep, get out of the pain. And next thing I know, five days later, I woke up uh, the National Naval Medical Center in Bethesda. When I started rehab and the prosthetics, it, it was, I mean, it was definitely weird at first, learning how to walk again. Um, I went directly into the parallel bars on the uh, normal, normal length prostheses. It was, it was tough, um, but it was, it was great to be able to walk again. When I first met him, I actually didn't even know he was injured. Once, you know, I started talking to him about it and him telling me the stories, it kind of blew my mind because you don't hear about it a lot. Um, we live in a house in Bowie, Maryland right now. Um, we have really no accessibility features in it. Um, I'm constantly running into all the doorways, all the walls, the corners. Um, there's still some room that I can't get into. In the kitchen, if I'm in the wheelchair, I can't grab a lot of things in the cabinets. Um, I've kind of resorted to using um, barbecue tongs to get some things or asking Becky for help. Um, and you're kind of at eye level with the cooktop. And if you're in a wheelchair, you know, you're boiling water or something, that's not really a place that you want to be. Um, in the bathroom, it's been, it's been pretty tough for me. Transitioning from the wheelchair to um, our shower chair uh, has been pretty difficult. I could fall off getting in there. She, she'll hear crashing and banging and she always thinks that, you know, something horrible has happened. Um, it's really, it can be tough, it can be really tough. We have two boys, so I am on top of that. I clean the house, I make sure he's comfortable all the time, I worry about him all the time. So, yeah, so pretty much anything he asks, I make sure I'm just there for him. Most of the uh, physical? Yeah. Any, anything I'm, physical? Yeah. Um, that normally a man would do, carrying something, carrying something heavy. Uh, I. I I can't do that anymore. I do all the groceries. She has, to, and she has to do it all. Yeah, it's tough. The new home from Homes for Our Troops, if, if, we, if we got that, um, would one, it would it, make the house more safe for me. Being able to comfortably get in and out of the shower, she wouldn't have to worry about me falling. Um, I could use a bathtub. I could turn around easily. I wouldn't tear up the house with the wheelchair. Um, I could get into any room. And another big thing that's, that's I've kind of been hoping to be able to do is I could give my son a bath. Well, Homes for Our Troops, um, the idea even having a home that he can give his son a bath in, like he said, would be incredible because the potential my husband has and so many of these men have um, is taken away. They could have done so many more things with their lives and you know, he can't take his son outside and kick a soccer ball with him, you know? So they're giving these men that have fought for us and done so much for us an opportunity to have the life that they really wanted. When you're at Walter Reed or Bethesda, you see the patriotism, you know, a lot of people come there. And, and when you leave, you kind of stop seeing that. When you go back out into the real world, it's not there all the time. And you can forget that people still care. And you, sometimes you wonder. And then you run across an organization like this, and it just takes you back that, that so many people care, and they care so much, and they want to do so much for you. And it's just, it's amazing. It's really amazing. These men deserve everything. I mean, they're out fighting for our country, and I think that a lot of people don't really pay attention to it and know a lot about it. And I just feel like they all deserve to have a normal life because they let us have a normal life.